Alright, today's video is the first one with actually an intro I've been working on. Uh, it's still under construction, it's probably going to change up over the course of the few videos I put out this week, but nonetheless it's up there. It gives the channel a little bit of an introductory of to what the channel is, uh, but you guys aren't here for that. You're here for the videos, the paint videos, all the custom work. Um, so today, today's video, I'm going to be taking you guys to work with me again. We got a car to paint. Um, collision car got hit in the front it's gonna be a, there's a repair on the fender repair on the hood and a brand new bumper and a brand new crash bar we got to paint so let's get to it see you guys at the booth
come in, I'll attack the seal rock, attack every coat I do. This will help pick up all the loose particles, the overspray that's left on the panels.
see what it does on the second coat. Air pressure does matter when spraying in metallics, any color really, besides a solid color. And it'll turn it from lighter to darker, depending on what pressure you're at. because it is kind of uh, time consuming. It's a lot of running back and forth to the mixing bank, adding toners. Um, I've got a chart in there that tells me what every single toner will do just by adding it into the mix. Um, it's just a lot of running back and forth, a lot of monotonous, a little tedious work. So I didn't film that part, but like I said, if you guys wanted to learn how I do that color matching, um, just comment below and I can make a whole video on that. But I'm gonna show you this car real quick before I put the new color off. See, the fender looks pretty good. You can barely tell that it's gradually fading, but the hood, with the being a large flat surface, you can really tell what the hood, where it gets blended. So, as a painter, your job is to pretty much check the naked eye, uh, blend everything out to where nobody sees it, you know, a lot of these colors from the factory, they don't make them perfect. So you do kind of have to be a scientist um, and actually tone every single color. Um, like I said, black's about the only color you can get away with, with uh, actually just painting and being and being all right for that. That's just straight black. So I'm going to get you guys set up. We're going to get this thing tacked off, put some new color on it.
anything that's flying in the air, all the odors that hits the panel, you want to get that stuff off before you put the next coat on because you'll see that. Well, this is gonna blend out to be a lot better than it was before kind of see on that hood it will change colors as when it when it goes to matte it'll it'll change a color right now it's really wet and fresh um, same way with the bumper but the key to this like I said is get the color as close as you can and kind of trick the naked eye now with this I'll even take a step further um, just to get it to even to even out a little bit better what i'll do is i'll take my existing paint which is barely any by at this point and my gun and i'll mix in there what we call base maker it's a clear base coat that allows you can spray it over the whole panel and i'll put a little bit of color in this and i won't do the whole entire panel because you want to stay away from your edges you know we're not blending at um, that's why we blend everything we do um, to even out the color and make sure there's no little, you might see a little bit of splotchiness, um, cars you see outside on the road. It's just, it's just not blended properly. So what we'll do is make that base coat, that, that clear base coat up, put it in our gun and blend it out even further. And uh, I'll go make it some up right now and come right back. Or even, 
You can tell how wet this stuff gets. Like I said, it's just a clear base coat. It's not gonna really change your color or anything, but it allows it to be blended out further than what it was just with the solid color. Some of these colors are so heavy metallic, you'll see those metallics, so you wanna try to hide that. Um, the key thing with this is, like I said, make sure it's unevenly, crisscross your patterns, make sure it does flash off before you go to the next step, which for us would be clear. Um, and this does two things. It not only does allow your blending come out and makes it a lot evener, a lot more even, but it also, when you go to clear, it'll make this really, really smooth. And you won't have any any paint sticking up to where, you know, when the clear dries, when clear dries, it actually shrinks. So you'll sometimes get those paint particles or metallic colors to stick up when it's fully dried because it'll shrink and it'll come through that, that clear and you'll have to sand it down and buff it. This will actually eliminate that. This will make it super smooth. You know, it'll be really easy to clear. And I'll do this even on the, you know, like the bumper, just because I didn't blend it, don't mean it don't need it. So I'll do it on everything. All right, got the clear base coat on everything, all the parts. You can tell it makes it really, really nice, matte, shiny. It looks silky smooth. And that's gonna help us when we clear. It's just gonna, it's gonna make it a lot easier. When we go to clear this, it's actually gonna be really slicked out in the first coat because you don't have those rev spots where the paint's laying in. That clear base coat just buries that stuff and makes it makes it really, really silky smooth. But you can tell our blend came out perfect. You can barely, you, I mean, you really can't even tell that we blended this. Same way with the bumper, it's silky smooth. 
So I got clearing the gun. We're gonna clear this bad boy. First coat down, this is what you want it to look like. You want it to look really, really smooth. As slick as you can get it, because like I said, clear is gonna shrink. Even though you're putting, you know, the way your gun atomizes, it 
So you're putting orange peel back into it, but you want to try to get it as slick as possible. A lot of mix and mix of uh, cars are, you know, their manufacturer, they got some orange peel. A lot of cars are different than others, so you just kind of go with what the other, what the rest of the car looks like. Obviously, you want to match their orange peel as good as possible. You don't want to make it too slick to where it's noticeable that it's been painted. But like I said, the color wise, this is what you want it to look like. Can't even tell it was blended. Same way with the bumper. Nice, silky smooth. So, I'm gonna go mix up some more clear. I'm probably gonna need about four or five more ounces. Come back in here, by that time it should be flashed off. We're ready to spray the second coat. So we got a spray out cord right here, and you can tell, just spending that extra time making sure your spray out cords are as good as possible. You know, you're gonna save, you're gonna save yourself a lot, a lot of hassle because you'll end up redoing it if you go ahead and clear it and you notice that your blend's not perfectly right. Um, so you always wanna make sure you take that time and like I said, if you guys want a video on how I mix my colors and how I know what toners to go where and how much, I can make a full video on that. But right now, let's get two coats on this and wrap this video up.
pretty much it guys two coats clear like i said collision stuff <coughs> excuse me that's all you need on this two is enough to where if you need a wet saint to buff anything out you can but i'll bake this at you know 150 degrees for about 45 50 minutes come out of the booth start on the next car but this shaped up to be really really nice so we'll get out of here so we don't collect any more dust and until next time see you guys later